So it's finally happened, ladies and gentlemen. The mayor's going after Chaz. She's going in. She's going to dismantle it. I mean, Chaz is going to get chopped. <laughs> For those of you who have been following. Um, uh, this like I've been following it. So what's happening today, is, or what's happening now, is you have a, a moment, we've had like, what, four shootings inside of the Chaz, and now the mayor is saying, oh, you know, it's really dangerous in there. So some people have said it's because of, and I heard this from Raging Golden Eagle, that it's possibly that a company that was like several billion dollars uh, for Seattle just up and left. They said, you can't control your streets. We're leaving. And they, they're saying this might be the reason for that. I, I would say that is part of the reason. But I'll tell you the other reason I think this is. And I it, this is something you're going to find almost universally with a certain type of politician, usually the majority of politicians. Uh, you find this with de Blasio. And I said this before. Uh, on Twitter, I said, figure out where this woman's kids are, if she has any, or any of these politicians that are running Seattle right now, to figure out where their kids are. I promise you that if they've got any teenagers, they're in the Chaz. That's why this is being allowed to go on. Uh, take Mayor de Blasio, for instance. His, uh, I think it's either his daughter or granddaughter, was caught out there vandalizing police cars and busting into businesses. Yeah, you know that chick is going to get jail time. <laughs> She's not going to get shit. She's got what's called privilege. Political privilege. All right? She's going to basically, Daddy de Blasio or Grandpa de Blasio is going to go in there, say a few words, threaten the judge, threaten the police chief, and then she's going to walk pretty much. It's the, the, that's, and that's what you're dealing with inside of Chaz. You're dealing with spalt brats who have never had a good ass whooping. To give you an idea of what kind of person you're dealing with in Chaz, um, you can find these peop- these kids very easily. You can figure out what kids are spalt and what kids are not by simply giving them what I like to call the Cadbury test. And for those who don't know what the Cadbury test is, it's exactly what it sounds like, okay? You you go to the Cadbury Egg Company, you get a couple of the uh, Cadbury eggs with the melted fondant inside of them, and you hand them over to them. The kids that say these are disgusting grew up rich, and mom and dad gave them just about everything. The kids who get the egg and they eat it, and they're like, oh, thank you so much, they don't grow up like that. Their parents are raising them right. Do you know Why? Because that's usually all mom and dad can give them. I remember my dad would go in and he would check me and my sister on Easter would want a Cadbury egg. And my dad would reach into his pocket and he would count out quarters, dimes, and nickels until he had $2 to buy. Back then, they were like 75 Actually, no, he didn't even need $2. Back then, he would try to get out a set. He would get like 75 cents, about $1.50. Is what it would take to get two Cadbury eggs on Easter. And that was the best thing in the world. Because we didn't grow up with a lot of stuff. I mean, we, we grew up... I, I lived out on the hill uh, in my town. Which is the woods. <laughs> so we had a field and wooded areas and a small road in front of our house. My best friend in life was an old quiche hound. Alright? My... My sister got her first cat. We had nine cats in the yard. They all stayed outside. We never had a mouse problem. We kept the cats and fed them because they killed the mice. I remember one day my dad pulled a almost seven foot snake out of a chicken house that he had in the back. Like we had a property that was about an acre of property. We converted three quarters of that property into gardening ground. So we could grow our own food. So we would be able to not... So we wouldn't have to starve or or be hungry during winter. Okay? We had a lot of canned goods. All right? Um, and and you have these kids here that have bulldozer parents, like the probably the mayor's kids. I don't know if her kids are over there, but I if she's got teenagers that are in college age, I'm pretty sure they're inside the jazz. 
And you've got these parents, what is it? It's the, the bulldozer mentality or bulldozer parents. Like the AARP commercial, I think is what it is, where or it's um it's got these two elderly people and they're fixing to go into a hedge into a hedge maze and they don't know, you know, they got obstacles in their way. The hedge maze is an obstacle. This one chick comes up with a bulldozer and she's like, hop on board. They hop on board and she just starts knocking down hedge walls like nobody's business, just plows right through the maze. That is a bulldozer parent. The problem is the bulldozer parent is removing obstacles that the kid needs to learn. Okay. If the kid goes through the maze, usually they're going to be smarter. Old people don't need to be going through the maze because they've done learn these lessons. They don't need to have life made harder on them. But back to the old Cadbury thing, your kid's rich. You're taking care of your kid too well. And they actually did this. I think it was, I think it was where they had people come in and try things. And they had some European kids come in and try Cadbury eggs. And they all said, oh, Cadbury eggs are, are nasty. They're awful. And I'm like, you idiots never. There was one dude. There's this one dark Irish looking joker. And he was like, mm, those are actually kind of good. And I was like, yeah, that kid's street. <laughs> you can tell that kid's either street or country. One of the two. He didn't grow up with a lot of money. He didn't have a lot growing up. That Cadbury egg was the, all his family could give him. It's probably all mom could give him on Easter. And he, it, it, that, or it's that kind of candy. You run these people all the time, man. They, they're, they'll be like, my favorite thing is a bologna sandwich with some ketchup and lettuce on it. That's usually all they had. You have these kids over here who take over an area. And then they run around like small brats. You should do this. It's hilarious because the whole time the chop is going on or the chaz or whatever, I'm just sitting there looking at this like, yeah, we got a whole bunch of chiefs, but not enough Indians, do, don't we? Everybody wants to be in charge, but nobody wants to follow a leader. This is, so, this is just hilarious watching. But honestly, like I said, you've had these shootings happen. And now someone, some idiot politician's dumb son or dumb kid is now in a war zone. So now, Cap, so now Mama Karen and Daddy Carl are coming in there to shut down the Chaz. Because guess what? We've had too much fun all of a sudden. <laughs> It's like the ball pit where the kid or their kid goes, I'm drowning, mom, I'm drowning. Suddenly Karen runs up there and just stabs the ball pit, one of them inflatable ball pits. She just stabs the ball pit and just lets all the air out. Our kids should not be subject to this. And all the other parents are like, it's a freaking ball pit. It's not like your kid actually was drowning. We're more worried about having to clean the poop out of the bottom of it from Jerry's kid over there who doesn't know how to use the bathroom. My God. Thank you, Karen, for, for slaying the bouncy castle. Good job. Now, now, now the, now the Karens and the Carls are coming in there and they're, they're going to shut down the Chaz because the Chaz has become too free and too dangerous. I really didn't have a problem. People walking around with guns. My problem was when, uh, what's his name? Who was it? I can't remember the dude's name anymore. Kaz or whatever his name was. It, he, um, he's a black rapper dude that gave out who's giving out AR 15s to people. And he tells the guy, take that mag out and put it back in. I'm like, maybe you want to take this idiot to a range first, you know, <laughs> teach him some basics like trigger control, uh, how to aim, how to clear. He's not going to be an effective soldier. He gets shot at. He might run. Because that's that's usually who the liberals are that join up with BLM. That's who the white people are. They're the cowards of the whites. Okay, they're the ones that go in there. Oh, we're going to kiss your boot because we're hoping you don't bash our skull in. Then right up when the other angry, other angry white people show up who will hurt your ass, who really don't have remorse about nothing, they're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. we were always on your side. <laughs> Chub ship almost me. Like I said before, allies. This term with SJWs, you know, allies. These people are my allies. I'm just, I'm just looking at like, yeah, those those people are gonna stab you in the back. Caesar had allies, okay. They stabbed him in the back too. He had allies in the Senate. Allies are not good. You want friends, not allies, kids. Remember that. But yeah, I mean, their kids are out there in this war zone. They're fixing to shut it down. Cause and and that this all this shows just several things. It's not gonna work out for the people doing this, because what it shows 
is that they had the power to end this at any time. It's it's going to piss off the business owners very, very quickly. Okay? Uh, it's going to piss off the residents that were stuck in jazz very quickly. And on top of that, this is what I'm going to say. Chaz was already the 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 Gestapo of Chaz was already trying to control. We, we saw socialism go from we, we we saw sixty years of Russian socialism in a matter of two weeks. It was impressive. I wish we had had more cameras. But just like most Soviet, just like the Soviet Union, like any communist country, they started clamping down on the media immediately because they don't want the world to know just how bad it is in there. Um, what is it? There's a, I use a lot of examples in my videos. I swear to God. There's actually a video I remember seeing when I was younger of uh, communist propaganda from North Korea when Kim Jong-il was in charge. Not Kim Jong-un. And what happened was, uh, in there, that it's it's so stupid because you've got these chicks running through there and they're singing and they got subtitles on what they're singing in uh, North Korean. And they the the they're walking up there and they've got these giant and the the final act to show just how great their country is. They're grabbing full baskets of potatoes and they're saying we have food aplenty and they take the potatoes and they start throwing them onto the ground. They're throwing cabbages on the ground. And then they say, that's why everyone wants to, that's why they, they don't like uh, North Korea, because we have all the, we have what no other country has. We have food aplenty and plenty of pretty women. That was, that was the whole gist of the entire deal. And it, it was just straight propaganda. But you have this moment, it's like, you don't see any real videos come out of North Korea. You don't see any news. I mean, we see news broadcasts, but they're they're doctored newscasts. Chop did this within a matter of weeks. Okay, that's how bad it got real quickly. That's how moronic these. And honestly, actual communists can actually can run their countries a little bit better than these morons can. Okay, we actually had people who were mentally stunted trying to start communism, and it it just accelerated. I actually have a little bit of respect for Stalin because he was apparently a little bit smarter than we give him credit for. However, just with any communist country, you have a lot of deaths. And this is the thing that I want to leave everyone with. I am quite certain, and I I want to challenge the news media. I want to challenge Fox News, Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity. Y'all need to get some boots on the ground down there with cameras. Because what you're going to see when this opens up, when they actually go in and press have the ability to move through, we need to know who all has died there. I promise you, this is going to be the left's Auschwitz. Because when they get in there, we've heard reports of, you know, kids being, th- dead bodies being thrown in dumpsters and stuff. I promise you, they're going to find something similar to a mass grave. We're, we're going to find, like, we're, we're going to get in there and we're going to see a horrendous stuff that happened where they just killed a person and just chucked them out. You, you have an area of the town that was going under the crap that it was going under during riots and looting, and we didn't hear about, the only people we've heard about dying were from the shootings. And when the only reason we heard about those was because some people were had cameras up. There was actually a Memology 101 I believe was the guy that was putting it out there. He put up a video where they steal a dude's phone and the phone is still live streaming after they steal it. And you can tell in these kids' voices, they don't know what they're doing. They're sitting there like, I don't know what we're going to do, man. Uh, We got to do something. We got to talk to the mayor, something. It's a war zone out here. It's a war zone out here. And I'm like, yeah. It's a war zone to you. Imagine if someone actually decided to take this area of the country. All right? You you imagine if you morons had to actually defend your crap. Nobody was coming in there to take anything from you. You were fighting your own people. You're just fighting a couple random maniacs who wanted to murder people. That was it. Okay? Uh, even, even if it was just self-defense by some people. 
The dudes were still running away because they knew they could shoot and get away with it. If they were self-defensive shootings. I think one of them might have been a self-defense shooting because there was an altercation, the first one. But the last ones where one kid got shot in the arm, I think the dude just walked right up into a crowd and just shot somebody. And now they're like, we don't know how to how to stop this. Um, it's the very same tactic used by a sniper I remember reading about in Afghanistan. One of our uh, Marine snipers went out there to fight him and you know had a pretty long sniper duel with the dude, uh, which lasted about, from first contact to him shooting him, it was almost an entire day that they were sitting out there patiently waiting for this guy. Uh, y'all check it out on a military channel. If you ever talk about like world's greatest snipers, there was a video. They, they actually did that. And they talked about like all the tactics they did. Like the moment they got into a, a contact, a conflict, they started looking for every sniper position and they started calculating the distance to each shot so that if they had to shoot, they would know exactly how far they could, they would have to adjust the scope. They would have to know, they'd know how to dope the scope in. So they'd be able to put it right onto the target every time. So they'd have high accuracy and low reaction time. And the way this Syrian guy was, he was a basically an Afghanistani who was Syrian trained as a sniper. The way he controlled the area, this entire, he controlled the entire town. He just snuck around the town with his little Dragonov, hopped up into a window, picked a random person out there and just put a dra- put a 7.62 round into him and dropped him. And he controlled the entire town like this. And that's why these Marine unit was sent in there to deal with this idiot. Because he just terrorized it. He pretty much was controlling them. Nobody came out and protested. Nobody done nothing. They were scared to move. That's what you're dealing with right now. Only you're dealing with random people coming in there and just coming up, shooting, and then running off and blending into the crowd. It sucks when your black block tactics suddenly work against you, to say some at least, uh, to, to say the least. Because everybody is dressed up like Antifa. Everybody looks the freaking same. You don't really know who's a friend or foe in jazz. But like I said, um, you're going to see this, and, and you're going to see the Seattle mayor, they're going to do something stupid and take this area over. Personally, if it was me taking Chaz, I, I know exactly how I would take it. Go in, turn off the water, turn off the power wall the area off and just sit back and wait. Okay. Sit back and wait. When they come up there like, Oh, can, can we leave? There's no water here. There's no food and we can't get the AC turned on. We're hot and dying of, out here. I'd be like, do you see this giant American flag sitting to the right of me? Well, yes. Yes, Mr. Raider. Okay. You guys have to pledge allegiance to this flag and then I will let you out. Not as a group, you will each of you come up to this flag and you will pledge allegiance to it. And then I will show you the mercy of letting you out of this hell you have built. And then live stream them coming up, pledging to this flag. Publicly humiliate them to the point where every other idiot that wants to try this nonsense and bring this hell onto our nation again would sit back and say... We would really like to do our own autonomous zone, but the possibility of failure is just too damn terrifying. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the last Raider. Thank you for listening to my video. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're new to the channel, and hit the bell for notifications. I put these videos out every so often during the week whenever I can get them out here. And as usual, folks, keep your head on a swivel, stay frosty. And I'll see you guys in the next video.